to God's glory. We're a little like Jesus' parents in this scripture passage, I think. While we're hoping for continued bits of Advent's peace and love and joy and hope and faith, we have to admit we're feeling a little cautious and a little nervous about what is to come. This new young family has had lots of visits and lots of stories told to them about their new baby. And here we get two more stories and predictions about what is to come. If the additional words of Simeon and Anna are any indication, this family must realize that what is to come for them is anything but normal. Maybe the reason these last four weeks of Advent, coinciding with the last four weeks of Mary's pregnancy, are all about staying awake. Because now we know that as parents, we need to practice never really getting a good night's sleep again. For getting relatively no sleep in our lives is a small price to pay for being a parent, especially the parent of the Holy One in our midst. For Mary, this past year has been odious. Oh, there have been a few high points, like getting to talk to angels when she's really, really scared about suddenly being pregnant. And it was really great that she got to go see her cousin Elizabeth for a little while, but the rest of it has been tough. There's been lots of moving around, trying to understand what's happening, lots of praying, and maybe even plenty of shame for not getting it right. Mary is not a wise old thing. She's only 14. She's as old as you or I were when we were in eighth grade, but in those days, 14 was old enough. Joseph, we know, is much older. And it might be his experience and his compassion that are helpful for Mary and that maybe smooth the way. Maybe like fathers of today, Joseph knows skills about how to mask up because of COVID and how to stay six to 20 feet apart and how to stay home and find things to do and Maybe how to get to the right place to get your immigration papers so his family will be safe. In her ninth month of pregnancy, Mary gets on a donkey and goes to Bethlehem, and it's a difficult trip, as we all can imagine. She gets to the dirty cave or the barn, depending on which part of the story you like butter, and she has her baby, and she also has lots of company, including shepherds, and Zoroastrian kings, and everything in between. These are people who come and tell her and call her baby the Son of God. In a few days, Mary and Joseph and Jesus travel the 28 miles to Jerusalem, to the temple where Jesus was to be presented to God, as was the custom, eight days after his birth. Well, here are more strange people saying strange things about their son. I suspect Mary and Joseph have had enough. They'd prefer not to hear any more, and especially what they're hearing now. First, they hear Jesus is the Son of God, and now the consequences of what that might mean are spoken out loud by these two holy people. Simeon says, the child is destined for the rising and the falling of many, and will be opposed, and a sword will pierce your heart also. And if that weren't enough, another holy person named Anna was saying that this child was the one they had been looking for and who would be responsible for the redemption of Jerusalem. Wow, now we believe that, we know that. But what must have Mary and Joseph thought? After all this, I'm sure they would be more than ready to make the 90-mile grueling trek back to Nazareth and put it all behind them. But that trip was no picnic. As an aside, biblical scholar J.F. Strange says that the trip was in the desert and it was super cold at night and super hot during the day. And yes, there were lions and bears and wild boars in the forests nearby. So someone had to fight them off too. 
And now in our scripture, we quickly have a big shift. If we were in the book of Mark, there would be lots of words like suddenly. But the big shift here is that they get home to Nazareth. Jesus grows in wisdom in God's favor. And then we don't hear any more about them until Jesus is 12 years old. And they all trek back, according to the law, to Jerusalem. But we know there's more. There's a lot more in this story. And that might be why we preach the lectionary. This time of Advent is also a time of good news. It's a time of great joy, peace and hope and faith and love. But many today are thinking this is all kind of foolish. We need more than these Pollyanna thoughts and prayers to get us through where we are today. We have just traveled through months of uncertainty, unbelievable deaths, fear and loneliness, and it is predicted to get worse. So it's a little hard to think how we might get through all this in one piece. The good news is there has been hope. Vaccines are on the horizon. People are getting vaccinated. We will see some kind of hope and peace and love and faith and joy, but not today. While I was preparing for this sermon, I kept hearing this Elvis Costello song in my head that goes, what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? What is so funny? It's not funny. It's what we want, peace and love and understanding. I know 2020 has been tough, maybe even grim for you or your family. But the truth is, tough as it's been, there will be more good. In bits and pieces, there will be faith. There will be hope and there will be joy. And maybe there will even be a little understanding too. We who have God, maybe a little God, and maybe we have Jesus, maybe we have a little Jesus and a little Muhammad and other wise ones, maybe Buddha. Things we've learned, wisdom that has come into us, that has made us who we are, maybe that will help us to do our best on the journey. We know full well that if we look into our future, that there is nothing wrong with peace or love or understanding. For these very things are about who and what Jesus is. Some curmudgeons, of course, laugh at us with our concentration on these things. And I'm thinking maybe we also ought to call the Sunday after Christmas the Sunday of the time of understanding. For understanding is what Jesus is all about. The dictionary tells us that understanding is a time when we are sympathetically aware of other people's feelings, and we are tolerant and forgiving. Understanding. Sympathetically aware of other people's feelings, and we are tolerant and forgiving. Mary will raise Jesus, and I think Jesus was probably a little bit of a difficult child, but she would be with him to the end. She will watch him die, as no parent ever wants to do. But because of him, she has come to understand that there will be more love and peace and joy and hope in the world. For Jesus' message is not a message that everything will be fabulous and wonderful all the time. No, the message was and is that things may or may not be a little difficult. We also know that as time goes on, because of these things, we will learn. We will learn to stand up for our neighbors and love our neighbors. We will learn to tell others what we believe while doing our best to feed the hungry, to comfort the grieving. And we might actually, 
we might actually, with God's help, guiding our feet, achieve some peace and love and understanding in our time. Amen and amen.